Hi, I'm Matt Greencroft. And I'm Richard Chesterwood. And in this short video, we'll be showing you our top tips to make your life easier when you're writing code with Eclipse. We don't tend to use these shortcuts in our training videos as we don't want to confuse people who aren't familiar with them, but we hope you'll find these useful. So let's start, follow our tips, and you too will be coding like an Eclipse Ninja. You're probably aware that if you start a comment with the words to do and whatever you want to put here, then you can find a list of all of these to do's by going to the tasks window. If you haven't got the tasks window visible, go to window, show view and select tasks. Here I can see that when I save this file, my something here appears in my tasks window. I can double click it to jump straight to where the problem is. But in addition to this, Eclipse has a feature called bookmarks and you can place any number of bookmarks anywhere in your text. I've got a finally block here, which I might be able to edit later. So let's put a bookmark on this line. To do that, we right click in the blue bar and choose add bookmark. We can give the bookmark a name. So I'm going to put here, edit the finally block. And like the tasks list, I can get a list of all of my bookmarks by clicking on window, show view, other, and then choose bookmarks. So here I've got a bookmark called edit the finally block. I'm going to put another bookmark somewhere else in my project. Let's do it on this line here. And I'll put here loan class constructor. Now I can jump between my bookmarks by double clicking them. One nice feature is that there is a way just to jump between all of the bookmarks one after the other using the keyboard shortcut for next and previous, but you do need to configure it first. And you configure it with these two buttons up here, the next and previous annotation buttons. If I click on next annotation, you'll see that this will allow me to go through any of the errors or warnings. I've got my particular version of Eclipse configured for Groovy, so there's an additional box here. I'm going to untick each of these and instead just tick bookmarks and I'll do the same with the previous. Just make sure that bookmarks is the only one ticked. Now, if I want to go between all of the bookmarks, I can hold down the control key and press the period button and that will jump to the next bookmark. Now, this only works within the class that you're in. So if you have one bookmark in a class, it will just take you to the bookmark. If we create a second bookmark in the same class, I'll do that down here. Let's create a bookmark here. Now, when I press my control and period, we can toggle between the bookmarks within the file, but it doesn't work between files. If I go to a file with no bookmarks in it and press control and period, nothing will happen. But at least that's a way to jump around the code within a file quite easily and quickly. Well, Java, of course, is well known for needing a lot of typing. So you can cut that down dramatically using the content assist feature. Let's say I want to do a system out print line. Well, instead of typing that, I can just type in sys out and then making sure that the cursor is still next to the letter T. If I hit command or control space, I get the option to select a template. And this is going to give me the block of code you can see here. So bang, we've got our system dot out dot print line. Another good template is the four template. That gives us four alternative templates. And perhaps the most useful is the for each template, which will set up a for loop for iterating around the collection. And another big tip here is that you can use the tab key or the shift tab key to move forwards and backwards across the items that you're going to need to edit. So after typing in, an object type there. I then hit tab to enter the enter the name of the object, tab again to type in the name of the collection. And finally, there's a little green arrow. That's a placeholder for when I hit tab once more, it will automatically put me into that block. There's a full list of the available templates under the preferences dialog box. Navigate to Java, editor and templates. I recommend you sort this list by the context column and you can then find all of the Java statements. My favorite in the list would have to be public method. So now every time you write a method, PU will do the job, 
Control or Command Space, select the public method template, and you're away. Return type, tab, name of your method, tab, input parameters, and one final tab, and now you can start implementing. Sometimes when you're looking through your code, you want to know where a particular method is being called from. I've got a class up here called the loan class, and I'd like to know where in my project this class gets instantiated. To do that, I can highlight the method name, in this case the constructor, right click and choose references, and either workspace or project, I'm going to choose project, and this tells me that there are two places in my project where this object is instantiated. In the loan test class, there's a method called test due date. I can double click on it, and there's the relevant line where the loan constructor is being called. Or if I choose the other one, that was in the main class in the main method. Again, double click to be taken straight to the line where my particular class has been instantiated. So you can right click on any method name, choose references and then project or workspace to get a list of everywhere in your project that that particular method is being called. I try to avoid using the mouse whenever I can. It's just too slow. Command or control F11, that will rerun the last program you ran or the last set of tests. In the preferences dialog, if you type keys in the filter box here, that will take you straight to the keys editor. Wherever you find yourself doing something repetitive with the mouse, see if there's a keyboard shortcut in here. For example, one thing I like to change, I'll type save into this filter box. The control S shortcut by default is bound to the save command, but I much prefer binding it to the save all command. I'll take the save command and delete the binding here and then select save all and then in the binding, Control or Command S. And now I don't have to switch through all of my tabs finding any edited files. Control or Command F7 will show you a list of all of the views that you have open. So if I want to switch to the Problems tab, for example, I can just use Control or Command F7 and keep pressing that until I've selected Problems, let go, and I'm straight in. No touching the mouse. If I need to go to a particular line number, rather than scrolling around with the mouse, I will use Command or Control L, which will allow me to go to a particular line. Control or Command Home will take me to the top of the file. Control or Command End will take me to the end of the file. If I need to move a block of code, such as this one, and this will work for a single line as well, I can hold down the Alt key and use the up and down arrows. And it will ensure that the indenting is kept correct. If you have a bracket and you want to find its matching closing bracket, then you can use Control or Command with Shift and P. And that will browse you to the corresponding bracket. I've got an example on screen here where I've coded in an inconsistent way. I've got a try catch block here where I've got my opening bracket immediately after the try and another one down here where my opening bracket is on my next line. Now you may have a preference to always style your code in a particular way and Eclipse allows you to do that automatically using code formatting. To apply the standard code formatting rules to your current code, just simply click anywhere in the middle and press on your keyboard Control Shift and the letter F. This will now make all your code consistent, and you can see here both of my try catch blocks now have the opening bracket immediately after the word try. If the built in code formatting rules aren't quite what you want, then you can change them. To do that, open up the Eclipse Preferences window, go to Java, then Code Style, and then Formatter, and you can click on Edit up here to edit the default format. In the example we've been looking at, we'd go to the braces tab and we'd say that we want our brackets to always be on the next line down. So I'm going to do that on each of these. It's a little bit tedious, so I'll do these off camera. So I've changed all of these to next line. I just need to move this window up so you can see the bottom of the window. Because it's a built-in profile, we can't just save it. We need to give it a new name. So I'll do that up here. I think I'll call it my profile. Very boring, I know. 
we can now click on OK at the bottom and apply. We have now got my profile as the active profile. If I go back into my code and once again do Control Shift F, well, we can now see that our opening brackets are always on a blank line. There are all sorts of other settings you can configure within the formatter options within Eclipse. And I think this is a nice way to keep your code readable and consistent. The Eclipse Quick Fix feature can speed you up dramatically. Let's say I want to call a method here on an object from a class that I haven't even written yet. The usual way around of doing this, of course, would be to go to File, Select New, Class, fill in the box here, start writing the method. Really boring. And by the time I've done that, I will have probably forgotten where I started from. So instead, my usual way would be to go right ahead and write the code as if the class had already been created. And of course, I have a compile error. But because this was deliberate, I know why it doesn't compile. So now I can either hover over the compile error or click the button here, or with the line selected, I can press Control or Command 1. And this will pop up the Eclipse Quick Fix box. This is Eclipse giving me a complete list of all of the changes that I could make that would make this code compile. And you'll often find that the first option in the list is the correct one. Of course, I want to create a class called my class. I still get the new Java class dialog box, but all of the entries are already filled in. If I click finish, there's my class in place already. Well, I wanted to call a method on this new object. Let's call it some method. Again, that method does not yet exist, but I'm going to control or command one again and let the quick fix do the hard work. The suggestion here is to create a method called some method, hit enter to select it, and there you are, I have a method stub already in place to implement. Here's a quick way to insert a for loop, a do or while loop, or a try catch block into your code. Simply highlight any line of code. On the keyboard, do Alt, Shift, and the letter Z, and you get a list of options here. If I pick, for example, the for iterate over array, then Eclipse will put in for me the for loop ready for me to complete it with my line of code that I highlighted in the middle of the loop. There are options here for the do loop, for and if statements, and you can even create your own by clicking on the configure templates button at the bottom. Of course, we can always undo a change using Control or Command Z. But what happens if you want to revert your code back to a much earlier point in time? Well, of course, you'll probably be using a code control system like Subversion, Git or Mercurial. But even so, perhaps you've been doing a few hours work and you haven't done any commits. So in that case, you can use Eclipse's local history feature. If we right click in the editor, and select Compare With and Local History. We get in this view a list of all previous edits of this file. This is not coming from source control. These are local copies of old versions that Eclipse has stored away in your workspace. So let's say I know for a fact that my code was good at this time here. Well, I can click on that revision and we get the current version and the old version side by side in this lovely diff tool. So I can compare the changes between the files and using this button here, I can go through all of the differences and copy the old version of the code back into the new version of the code. And an alternative to that is again, right clicking on the canvas, I can select replace with local history. And in this window, I can go back to any early version, select it, and if I want this version in its entirety, I just press the replace button to go right back in time. Quite often we'll be working on some code and we'll need to refer back to another class to, for example, check what fields are in it. Well, swapping between two files can be a bit frustrating. So it's possible to view both files on the screen at the same time. You simply take one of your tabs and drag it either to the right to create a vertical split or you can drag it down 
to create a horizontal split. Now I can edit one of my classes and just glance down to remind myself what's in the other class. When we've finished, grab the tab, drag it back next to the initial tab and our screen's back to normal. An easy one this, but probably the one I use the most. You're in a class and you see in there a reference to another class, like this book. Now I want to see the contents of that class. Don't waste time looking for it in the Package Explorer here, hunting it down and finally double clicking on it. Just select any class and hit F3 and that will jump you straight into the definition of that class. Well, you might have already known about that one, but often you're working with an interface. Let's say I want to see the definition of this book service here. Well, F3 in this case will only take me to the interface, which in this case is not what I wanted. Well, you can press Control or Command T. That will give you a full list of the implementations of the interface. Just select one of them, hit enter, and you're there. Here's a bonus tip, which will help you save a little bit of time navigating the structure of your project. Rather than looking down this list to find a particular class, pressing Control Shift and T on your keyboard will pop up a window in which you can start to type in a class name. You can then double click the class you want and it will be opened in the editor. Now this is useful when you have a very large list of classes, or I think particularly useful when you have the editor in full screen. If I now wanted to, for example, open the book class, rather than having to put my window back into a more minimized view so I can see my package explorer, I could do Control Shift and T, start typing the word book, and then double click it to open my book class. If you're looking for a file rather than a class, you can do Control Shift and R, R is short for resource, and then start typing in a file name. For example, in this project, I've got an XML file called config, and I can find it that way and open up my file. I hope you found these tips useful. If you have any other Eclipse coding tips, let us know and we'll feature them in one of our future videos. You can contact us via Facebook, our website, or you can even post a reply video on YouTube.